Good evening, everyone. We're ready to get started with the public hearing. Welcome to the public hearing for the Interstate 10 PD&E study for the segment from east of Alabama State Line to west of US 29. If you do not hear audio at this time, please check your computer speaker settings. If you're experiencing technical difficulties, please contact technical support at Amanda Hanley at AtkinsGlobal.com. In the event of technical difficulties during the open house or the public hearing, please stay online while we work to resolve the issue. My name is Iris Waters and I will be moderating the public hearing for the Interstate 10 PD&E study on behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation. Thank you for your interest in this study. Nicole Arendt, the project manager for this pd &E study is overseeing the hearing in person location at the Pine Forest United Methodist Church in Pensacola, Florida. We're both being supported by represent representatives of the FDOT District 3 and consultant team. We would also like to take a moment and thank any elected officials who are in attendance for tonight's public hearing. We appreciate your interest and involvement in this project. We will now turn our attention to the narrated public hearing presentation. Thank you. Good evening. The Florida Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to the public hearing for the Interstate 10 Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study, Financial Management Project Number 437905-1. In addition to the PD&E staff here tonight, a representative from the District Right-of-Way Department is here and will be available after the public hearing if you have questions regarding business relocations on this project. A transcript is being made of all oral proceedings and will be part of the public record for this project. Before we start the presentation, I will share a few details to help you participate in this meeting through GoToWebinar. On your computer or device screen, you should see an information window that looks like the one in the upper right corner shown here. To listen to the meeting, your computer or device speakers are selected by default. If you prefer to listen by phone, select Phone Call in the audio pane of the control panel and dial in using the information displayed. All virtual and phone-in attendees will be placed in listen-only mode throughout the public hearing. At a later date, we will provide responses to written comments that were submitted during online registration and those submitted at the in-person venue. The comment period begins as soon as the presentation has ended. Verbal comments from the in-person meeting will be addressed first. Verbal comments during the online registration will be addressed second. Providing verbal comments using GoToWebinar is simple. First, you must request to speak when registering to attend. During the comment period, the organizer will call your name that you provided at the registration and unmute you. If the microphone icon is green, you are ready to make your comment. If the microphone icon is orange, you will need to click the microphone icon once and it will notify you that you are unmuted and then you can provide your comment. Again, you will not be on camera at any time if you join online. During the public comment period after the formal presentation, in-person participants will be called upon to speak first, followed by the virtual online speakers who wish to speak. If you dialed into the public hearing by telephone, your phone was automatically placed in listen-only mode and will remain in listen-only mode throughout the public hearing. A recording of the webinar will be available at the project website three days after the public hearing. You can also call the project manager after the public hearing to request additional project information. Prior to the public hearing, draft engineering and environmental documents were made available for public review at the offices of HDR Engineering, 25 West Cedar Street, Suite 200 in Pensacola, since March 1st, 2021, and will continue to be available through April 20th, 2021 at this location. HDR Engineering is available by appointment only. Individuals who would like to view the documents should call the office manager, Mindy Heim, at 850-429-8900 
or email mindy.heim at hdrinc.com. The office is located at 25 West Cedar Street, Suite 200, Pensacola, Florida. COVID-19 protocols are in place at this location and will be explained when you make your appointment. You may also view project documents tonight at the in-person public hearing and with the link from the website shown on the screen. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, alternatives under consideration, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum, providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. The proposed improvement involves widening Interstate 10 between the state line and US 29. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts, both adverse and beneficial, and proposed methods to mitigate adverse project impacts. And third, a formal comment period following this presentation where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone, or you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. This environmental study has been conducted by FDOT District 3 in compliance with all applicable federal environmental laws and pursuant to 23 United States Code Section 327 and the implementing Memorandum of Understanding between the Florida Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration signed on December 14, 2016. The FDOT and Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee is the approving authority. This public hearing was advertised in the Pensacola News Journal, the Florida Administrative Register, and was noticed consistent with federal and state requirements as shown on the slide. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the FDOT District 3 office or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is displayed on the screen, at the sign-in table at this hearing, and in the project handout. FDOT is conducting a Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study for this project. The PD&E process is used to evaluate potential impacts to determine an alternative utilizing a continuous community outreach process to ensure that all interested parties have meaningful participation in the process. Public input and information received at the hearing will be taken into consideration when preparing the final documents for this study. The previous public meeting was held Tuesday, February 4th, 2020. Following this public hearing, FDOT will continue to advance the project to the design phase, which is funded in fiscal year 2025. Neither the right-of-way phase nor the construction phase are currently funded at this time. FDOT is evaluating conceptual improvements on I-10 from east of the Alabama state line to west of US-29 as shown in red outline on the map, a distance of approximately 10 miles. The project is being developed concurrently with a separate study for the Beulah Interchange, project number 433113-1, shown in blue with red outline. The focus of tonight's hearing for project 437905-1 is the remaining portion from the waste station to west of US-29, shown in yellow with red outline. The purpose of this project is to address capacity and safety issues on I-10 between the Alabama State Line and US-29 in Escambia County. This project is intended to address existing and future congestion and delay on I-10 with the goal of making the I-10 corridor operate safer and more efficiently through Escambia County. 
these improvements are consistent with the long-range transportation plan of the Florida Alabama Transportation Planning Organization or TPO, the state and TPO transportation improvement programs and the county comprehensive and area plans. In an effort to increase safety and capacity, FDOT is proposing the following primary changes. Widen I-10 from four to six lanes. Reconstruct the interchanges at Nine Mile Road and Pine Forest Road as diverging diamond interchanges. Replace the existing bridges and provide noise barriers. Stormwater treatment locations will be finalized when the project advances to the design phase. We will go through each of these proposed improvements. The first element of the project is to widen I-10 from four to six lanes. I-10 within the study area is currently a four lane divided highway with two 12 foot travel lanes in each direction separated by a 64 foot median. Widening to the inside would construct 12 foot lanes to the inside of the existing roadway in both directions. The median width would be reduced from 64 feet to 40 feet. This reduced median width would require a physical median barrier such as cable barrier, guardrail, or concrete barrier to be determined later in the design phase of the project. Inside widening was selected because it would have the least amount of environmental, social, and engineering impacts and is consistent with previous I-10 widening projects throughout FDOT District 3. The second project feature is to reconstruct the interchanges at Nine Mile Road and Pine Forest Road as diverging diamond interchanges. Several options were evaluated for replacement of the interchanges using traffic modeling and safety analysis tools. After an initial screening, both the diamond and diverging diamond were selected for in-depth analysis to model traffic conditions to the year 2046. While both options improve traffic operations compared to the no-build alternative, the diverging diamond interchange is expected to provide greater traffic capacity in the future when compared to the diamond alternative. The diverging diamond interchange, or DDI, was determined to be the best option. The interchange at Exit 5 for alternate US-90 or Nine Mile Road would be reconstructed as a diverging diamond interchange, or DDI. The signalized intersections with the ramps would operate at level of service C or better in future year 2046 design conditions. This is compared to the level of service C through F in future year 2046 no-build conditions. The Nine Mile Road DDI has a six-lane section in the core of the DDI, three eastbound and three westbound lanes, to accommodate Project 218605-4, which would widen Nine Mile Road to six lanes. An expanded sidewalk would accommodate pedestrians through the interchange. Bicyclists would use the paved shoulder. The interstate would bridge over Nine Mile Road as it currently does. The interchange at Exit 7 for State Road 297 or Pine Forest Road would also be reconstructed as a DDI. The signalized intersections with the ramps would operate at level of service C or better in future 2046 build conditions. This is compared to level of service E through F in future 2046 no build conditions. The DDI at Pine Forest Road includes realigning Wild Lake Boulevard and adjusting access at West Detroit Boulevard. Wild Lake Boulevard would be realigned to a new signalized intersection along Pine Forest Road near where Loblolly Lane currently intersects Pine Forest Road. This would result in a change of access to adjacent commercial uses. However, the roadway in the vicinity of Wild Lake Boulevard intersection and adjacent driveways is a high crash location. This relocated access would provide a greater distance of separation from Wild Lake Boulevard to the interchange and improve safety. West Detroit Boulevard is expected to be changed to a partial restricted crossing U-turn with a right in, right out, and a southbound left onto West Detroit Boulevard. Westbound lefts would be diverted to a median U-turn located north of the current intersection. Pine Forest Road has a five-lane section in the core of the DDI, three southbound and two northbound lanes, 
to accommodate the potential for future widening along Pine Forest Road, which will be evaluated as part of a separate PD&E study. An expanded sidewalk would accommodate pedestrians through the interchange. Bicyclists would use the paved shoulder. The interstate would bridge over Pine Forest Road as it currently does. Access management is the coordinated planning, regulation, and design of access between roadways and land development. Access management limits the number of pedestrian and vehicular conflict points, improves safety, and improves overall transportation mobility for both vehicles and pedestrians. Nine Mile Road and Pine Forest Road are currently Access Management Classification 3, which restricts the spacing of driveways, median openings, and signals to defined distances. Although there are no changes to Access Management Classification proposed, the project does propose access changes. The access changes are needed because of the minimum spacing requirements for Access Management Classification 3. At Nine Mile Road, two full median openings remain in the proposed condition, including openings at Spectrum Properties, Pathstone Development, and Pine Cone Drive, as shown by the light blue dots on this map. No changes to the existing access are proposed at either location. At Pine Forest Road, three full median openings are proposed to remain, including openings at Pine Forest Drive, Interstate Circle, and relocated Wild Lake Boulevard, as shown by the light blue dots on this map. Five existing full median openings will be eliminated or modified, located at a commercial driveway north of Interstate Circle, Loblolly Lane, Shelley Road, existing Wild Lake Boulevard, and West Detroit Boulevard, as shown by the pink dots on this map. The third project feature is to replace the existing bridges. There are seven bridges to be replaced within the project limits. Two bridges over 11 Mile Creek, a bridge culvert that conveys 8 Mile Creek under I-10, and the bridges that make up the interchanges at Nine Mile Road and Pine Forest Road. The recommended bridge typical section will consist of six 12-foot lanes with 12-foot inside shoulders at the center and 10-foot outside shoulders. The fourth project feature is to provide noise barriers. Noise barrier locations must meet specific FDOT and federal criteria. Four noise barriers are currently identified. At Plantation Woods and Westwood Apartments, noise barrier A is proposed at 3,732 feet long and 22 feet high. At Nature Creek, noise barrier BB is proposed at 1,700 feet long and 20 feet high. At Detroit Manor, noise barrier EB is proposed at 1,100 feet long and ranges from 8 to 9 feet high. And at North King and East King Estates and North Olive Heights, Noise barrier EI is proposed at 4,200 feet long and ranges from 10 to 16 feet high. Once the project advances to the design phase, additional public involvement will be provided to review and update the locations and sizes of the noise barriers. An important element of this study was to evaluate the potential project impacts and benefits. A wide range of environmental resources were evaluated, including various social, cultural, natural, and physical features. Cost and engineering and traffic factors were also considered. The resources listed in bold will be further discussed in the following slides. Farmland impacts were evaluated with Natural Resource Conservation Service. 3.37 acres of prime farmland would be required for right-of-way. The impact was determined not to be significant. One of the unavoidable consequences on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of no residential and two business locations, both associated with the interchange improvements at Pine Forest Road. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. 
If you are required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you are being moved and you are unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution. If you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. A representative from the District Right-of-Way Department is here tonight and will be able to provide you with further assistance if you have questions regarding residential or business relocations on this project. FDOT conducted a cultural resource survey and found no impacts to historic structures districts, or archaeological sites. The project segment has two main creek systems, 11 Mile Creek and 8 Mile Creek, both of which would have bridges replaced. Wetland impacts were evaluated pursuant to Presidential Executive Order 11990. Wetland impacts for this project have been determined to be 3.52 acres and 0.45 acres of other surface waters for a total of 3.97 acres of impact. Floodplain impacts were evaluated pursuant to Executive Order 11988. The project traverses 100-year floodplain and floodway associated with both 8 Mile and 11 Mile Creeks. There will be no encroachments in the 11 Mile Creek floodplain or floodway. At 8 Mile Creek, minimal encroachment will result from possible change of the roadway profile. Potentially contaminated sites were identified and evaluated. Of the 26 identified sites, the project has the potential to impact seven sites with a high risk of contamination and four with medium risk. These locations will be further assessed during the design phase prior to construction. The project has an approximate total cost of $214 million, which includes cost for final design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. Thank you. That concludes the formal presentation. We will now begin the public comment period of the public hearing. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be sent to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management, which, based on the Memorandum of Understanding signed with the Federal Highway Administration on December 14, 2016, has approval authority on this project granting location and design concept acceptance. Anyone desiring to make a statement will now have an opportunity to do so. There are multiple ways you can provide your comments tonight, written or verbally or online. If you do not wish to speak at the microphone, you may provide your comments in writing or directly to the court reporter at the comment table. Every comment method carries equal weight. We will now call upon the in-person participants who have requested to speak. As I call your name, please step up to the microphone and state your name and address before making your comments. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. I have speaker number one, Sean Bullington. Good evening, NIFDOT. Thank you for hosting us. First comment is I love the 
diverging doming interchange. Excellent idea. Used it over in Alabama, works perfectly, even at night. But Pine Forest Road widening northbound needs to be done. Please start on this as soon as possible. Get this section north of I-10 to 97A expedited, please. Shouldn't six lanes also be considered with the constant current and future plan growth? What can be done today, yesterday, to improve Pine Forest Road? And I have several suggestions, just ask HDR. For the record, any commissioners here? Any county administrators here? Disappointing. For the record, I'd like to document that no commissioners came here today to listen to the citizens, us, and to answer the dire questions and issues that are happening. They just don't seem to care, and this is unfortunately more evidence. I'd also like to note that Emerald Coast Regional Planning didn't show up and didn't promote this event. We would have had a lot more people here, FDOT, if those agencies and the county would have done a lot better job of promoting this. There's a lot of people on social media today that were ranting and pleading for the improvements that are needed to be done. But we know that it doesn't rest on y'all only, it really rests upon the backs of the commissioners. Please extend the interchange project down to Interstate Circle. I know it might be financially cost a little bit more, but it's almost common sense. It is a intersection with Pine Forest Road that is very much needed to have a traffic light so that the drivers can safely cross and turn at that intersection. The same intersection should tie into, I'm going to probably mispronounce this road, Shelley Road, or C-H-E-L-L-I-E. I see that FDOT is going to utilize that same road from Wild Lake to the back of the businesses. Might as well connect it to the Interstate Circle and Pond Forest Road and have a pedestrian crossing there as well. Let's think ahead and be proactive with safety in mind for all. Thank you very much. Does anyone else desire to speak? If so, state your name and address and complete a speaker card after you've given your statement for the public record. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our online moderator, Ms. Amanda. We'll now call upon online participants who were requested to speak at registration. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, Iris. For those wishing to offer public comment virtually, I will call your name and then unmute you. Please make sure to also unmute your microphone on your end using the GoToWebinar control panel as shown on this slide. When it is your turn to speak, please state your name and address. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please don't forget to provide that information as well. Again, we ask that we limit that you limit your comment to three minutes. And before you speak, make sure that you have not self-muted, which you can undo again by clicking on the microphone icon in the control panel. If you did not ask to speak when you registered for the hearing, but you would like to do so now, please use the raise your hand feature and I will call on you once we hear from those who have previously registered to speak. Uh, before we got here tonight, two folks registered to speak, and I do not see their names. However, it's possible that they are here and just, you know, logged on using someone else's computer. So I want to first give George Levy a chance to speak. Uh, George, are you here, perhaps registered under somebody else's name? If that is true, go ahead and raise your hand. George Levy. All right, I don't... Don't see any hands raised. All right, and our next uh, pre-registered speaker was John Lee. John, if you are here under another name, will you go ahead and raise your hand for us? John Lee or George Levy? All right, I don't see any, name, any hands raised for them. All right, this time we'll open it up. Is there anyone else who did not register ahead of time but would perhaps like to off, uh, offer comment now? If so, please just use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your control panel. All right, I am, I'm not seeing any hands, Iris, so I think we might be done with public comment virtually. I'm going to hand it back to you.
Thank you very much. This concludes the public comment period. I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to share your comments concerning this project. You may also submit your comments after tonight's public hearing, but they must be postmarked or emailed by April 20th, 2021 to become part of the public hearing record. Written comments can be mailed or emailed to the project manager, Nicole Arendt, whose contact information is shown on the slide and in the handout. You may also visit the project website listed on the screen to further view documents and submit comments. The exact transcripts of tonight's public hearings, oral proceedings, together with all written material received as part of the hearing record and all studies, displays, and informational material provided at the hearing will be made part of the project decision-making process and will be for public review upon request. Thank you for attending this public hearing and providing your input on the project. I hereby officially close the public hearing at 6.32. Thank you for your participation and have a safe evening.